subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. There are now multiple outbreaks of bird flu among birds in different parts of India as well as in other countries leading to migratory birds turning up dead in different states and different parts of the world. Bird flu can infect humans too but very rarely and there aren't any cases right now among humans in India. In this video, let's discuss what the bird flu is, how the influenza virus works and mutates, what the differences between the various strains of this virus are such as H5N1 or H1N1 or H3N2, what animals this virus affects and how humans have been preparing to deal with an influenza pandemic should one occur anytime soon. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. There are four families or rather four genera or genus of the influenza viruses that can affect vertebrates including birds and mammals and humans. These four are the alpha influenza virus, the beta influenza virus, the gamma influenza virus and the delta influenza virus which are also referred to as influenza A, B, C and D respectively. Alpha influenza virus or influenza A virus affects birds and mammals and humans and has caused pandemics in the past such as the 1918 Spanish flu. Beta influenza virus or influenza B virus affects humans and seals. Influenza C affects humans, pigs and dogs while influenza D affects livestock, pigs and cattle. Influenza A, B and C are thus of concern to us because they can spread to humans. Of these, influenza B is found very rarely, it mutates very slowly and we acquire immunity to it at a young age. Influenza C is also very rare and it also affects primarily children when it spreads to humans. But Influenza A is not so easy to tackle or categorize. It consists of many, many subtypes and we've seen these names before. These are the H1N1 or H3N2 or H7N10 or H5N8. All of these are different subtypes of the influenza A virus. Let's briefly look at how this naming system works. We know that the coronavirus, which has caused the ongoing pandemic, attaches and enters the human body with its spike protein, which is a protein that is found on the surface of the virus. It is a surface antigen and an antigen is any part of a foreign body that enables our immune system to recognize as being foreign and then mount an immune response. Just like the spike protein antigen, there are two main kinds of surface antigen for the influenza A virus. The hemagglutinin is indicated by H and the neuraminidase is indicated by N. The H antigen is a glycoprotein that helps the virus enter cells and the N antigen is an enzyme that helps the virus exit a cell. Now there are different types of these two antigens as well. How many? Well, there are 18 types of H antigen and there are 11 types of N antigens that we have identified in the influenza A virus. All existing subtypes of the influenza A virus are theoretically just combinations of these very varieties of H and N which totally leads up to about 198 theoretical subtypes. But we haven't identified or sequenced all of them. We've done so for about 30 or so subtypes. Some of these are infectious and cause disease in some species while some do in others and most are primarily found among birds. Important to us is that among humans there are three subtypes that circulate or are endemic to the human population. In the past, H2N2 was the more common subtype that was found among humans. It caused the Asian flu in Singapore and East Asia in 1957 and 58. And it's also suspected that it caused the Russian flu or the Asiatic flu in the late 1800s. But this H2N2 subtype is now thought to be extinct in the wild because it mutated and has now evolved to the H3N2 subtype. The H3N2 is also endemic to humans 
and caused the Hong Kong flu pandemic in the years 1968 to 69, which killed millions. It was one of the more deadly pandemics that we've had. The third subtype that we know is the H1N1, which also spreads rapidly among humans. This was the subtype that caused the 1918 Spanish flu outbreak, and it was also the one that caused the 2009 swine flu outbreak, both among humans. Now, the H3N2 subtype and the H1N1 subtype might not actually cause a more severe form of the disease, but both are highly transmissible, so they spread really fast and have caused. Pandemics in the past. The third subtype that is still endemic to humans today is the H1N2 subtype. These are the three H1N1, H1N2, and H3N2 that are currently circulating among humans, and H2N2 is considered to be extinct in the wild. But while only four of these subtypes have been endemic to humans, nearly all of them have been found in birds. Most subtypes can infect birds and cause the avian flu or the bird flu. In the wild, primarily aquatic and migratory birds are affected by the avian flu, and this eventually spreads to many poultry birds as well. Many other subtypes of the influenza A virus are found in horses and pigs. H5N1, the avian flu subtype, for example, has also spread to big cats and domestic cats. The H3N8 variant has also spread to dogs and is now endemic and circulates among dogs, horses, and birds. The later HNN combinations such as H17N10 and H18N11 have been found in bats. But this is not to say that none of the other subtypes can spread from birds to other mammals or humans. There have been isolated zoonotic events like. The spread of H5N1 or H9N2 or H7N2, H7N3, H10N7, all of these subtypes have spread to humans, and these are capable of spreading to a human from an infected bird. It will infect the human who got it from the bird, and the human will in turn fall sick and will show flu symptoms. But these subtypes don't really have the ability to be transmissible from humans to humans, so they don't really cause epidemics or pandemics. However, researchers have identified a couple of these subtypes that have the potential to cause a pandemic in the future. One of these is the H7N9 subtype, which caused an epidemic in China in 2013. Which went on and off until 2016 and killed about a hundred something people and infected about a thousand something people. This subtype has been identified to have the potential to cause a pandemic. Another subtype is the common bird flu subtype H5N1, which has also been identified to have the ability to theoretically, in just a few mutations, cause a pandemic among humans. At the moment, it is still an avian disease. It is not causing a pandemic among humans, but this could have the potential to cause a pandemic sometime in the future, a bird flu pandemic. We call these kinds of diseases bird flu, avian flu, or swine flu, or equine flu, or canine flu, depending on which animal the genetic sequences of the virus reveals that they came from. But Those kind of animal adjective descriptors can be confusing, and it's just easier to refer to them as an H N subtype. Now, before the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic came along, many of the world's virologists and infectious disease experts anticipated that whatever the next pandemic would be among humans, it would be an influenza pandemic because so many of the recent epidemics and pandemics, like the Spanish flu pandemic, have been of the influenza virus. Because of this, we were theoretically more prepared to deal with an influenza outbreak than a coronavirus one, and many countries had worked with WHO to come up with a plan for dealing with an influenza pandemic. We already do have vaccines. We have several vaccines that we have developed for bird flu, which some countries have stockpiled in case there is a pandemic and an outbreak among humans. 
We also do have the regular flu vaccines. Unlike coronaviruses, flu viruses mutate very quickly, requiring vaccinations to be updated every year. Fighting off the influenza virus for a global population is likely to be much, much more challenging than fighting off a coronavirus. However, that said, we do have some good news from just the past decade. In 2011, scientists managed to discover the FI6 antibody, which targets the H protein. The best part about this antibody's discovery is that it binds to all known types of H protein and neutralizes them. And as a result, this antibody can theoretically fight off all known subtypes of the influenza A virus. This spells good news for us in the future. Now, currently, what is happening in India with the bird flu outbreak? Firstly, there seems to be a little bit of confusion about whether this is H5N1 or H5N8. When we talk about bird flu, typically we refer to H5N1. But the subtype that is circulating among birds currently in India seems to be the H5N8 subtype according to newer reports. This outbreak actually began last year, early last year, in Saudi Arabia in February of 2020, which was where the subtype was first reported among wild birds. It then spread to Russia and Kazakhstan as it primarily affected migratory birds. So the birds carry these viruses across large distances as they migrate and fly across countries. And this was later, of course, confirmed in October, November and December in multiple parts of Europe when migratory wild birds were found infected in Netherlands, Denmark, Sweden, UK, Ireland, Germany, Belgium and France. It also spread to Japan and other Asian countries and from wild birds has now infected farmed and poultry birds, including chicken and turkey. Many poultry farms in multiple countries have seen mass culling of birds. Currently, in India, the situation is the same. Kerala has already seen the mass culling of thousands of chickens and ducks. Migratory birds have been falling dead in parts of Himachal Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan as well as Kerala. And birds have been found to infected as far north as Jammu and Kashmir. The number of birds currently infected number in the tens of thousands and many wild birds such as the bar-headed geese have been seen dying of this subtype of the virus. While the H5N8 isn't very contagious in humans, it spreads very rapidly among birds and is very deadly to birds as well. So, expect to hear more about mass culling of poultry birds and farm birds over the next few weeks as well as deaths of wild birds as more and more birds get infected with this subtype and the animal husbandry and other officials work hard to try and curb the spread of this subtype both in India and abroad.